On today's video, I carved out a capital, the bottom of a capital that you would see on a bank building from a piece of limestone. And then when I was done with that, I took it up to the carver, Wayne Faree, and he put the flutes in for me. So I'm gonna show you how it was done. We're walking up to this old bank building and we're looking at these pillars here, how they were made. And you can see that uh, they got this roundness to it. What we're gonna try to do is capture this in miniature. Something else I wanna point out here, this is what they call a baker's patch. See, that was patched in there. But when these were made, they go into the side of the building like this. And you can see that old style uh, scallop finish, machine finish. We're just gonna kind of duplicate this and see how they did it without putting this on a lathe. Now here's another old bank and these are fluted columns and here's the base like this. You know a lot more detailed work when you get into the fluted columns. We're just gonna keep it basic. Now we're looking at a church and of course you could see they just put the columns on a base here but they still they still had to make this into one piece this is one piece from here all the way over to here and then this is a different piece from here it goes into there see it there's no seam into there so we're gonna do something that replicates that to show you how it was done well this is the stone we're gonna use and today's a good day to do this because it's uh, raining outside and it's pretty miserable but this stone came off a convent that they were ripping down and it was probably a pillar on the bottom like this and then they continued whatever they wanted up here and when they were ripping it down it all got chipped so we're gonna look at this in the back of it you can see those marks that they use from the scallop chisels and this is the old lime mortar here that they used in those days that I guess you could still use pretty on there pretty tight we'll let that there that's not bothering us we're gonna look at this and we know that the old timers were square crazy so everything here is square and it works out good so what we're gonna do is we're gonna probably make that'll be about the thickness of the round piece on the bottom okay that's just for for just a idea we get this bucket and that's probably down there about how big that'll be of course we got to make a pattern and the top part like that this is will be down here top part we're going to turn the bucket around like this and we're going to do something like that so now I'm going to make a pattern now we're going to make a pattern and we're just using an old plastic lid off an old thing I'm going to sacrifice it and we're going to get this bucket and we're going to draw like that that's the roundness for our pattern and on the other side, we're going to make another pattern like this, and that will be for the other side, and that'll go like that. Now, all I got to do is cut this all out and just using some old wire cutters. I'm going to cut this right out following those lines. You could use anything. You could use black paper. I wanted something a little more steady though. So that's it. I got my patterns inside and out. Let's go check them out. So I got my pattern. I know when I'm cutting, I cut it down. This part down here will be there this part right here as I cut it down I'll follow that all the way down here's my round part in the middle so I got my patterns 
any way I go. So let's look what's going on. I made my pattern. I got to go down here and down here. And there's my pattern. This will rub against there. And that will bring me all the way down as I go. Now anytime I do anything fancy, which I might screw up on, I go to uh, a book called Modern Practical Masonry. And when I was out at the Cathedral of St. John's in the 80s and they were working on this stuff, I had to actually go to the library and find this book and copy it. I use this book as a reference if I ever had to. You see how they have the uh, center lines? And uh, they show you how to, they tell you everything you need to know. Well, I brought this outside and just a little cheap air gun. I'm just going to practice a little bit until I get the feel of it. So I'm getting the feel of it. So I'm going to come over here and start working my edge. just go around by hand first I don't want to chip it up into there because like my buddy Saint Wayne says you always have to have somewhere where the stones gonna go I'm doing the corners of my stone I'm just using a wood chisel and uh, if you watch my channel some time ago some time ago I did a, a video called Carving Stones in Limestone, or Carving Letters in Limestone. And uh, it's the same thing as carving letters. You just take your time and you, you, you trace it out and you follow it. And see, when I get down there where that square, that corner is square, then I'm right on to where I want to be. Now if you watch my other videos, and you watched carving stones with ancient technology. I actually carved into a piece of granite with other granite. I had to prove to them guys that you don't need all them fancy tools that they say you need in Egypt. Get in this corner. Gotta go slow. This is my salvage stone. I gotta do this right. Then when I get this corner in, then I'm gonna start using a pneumatic tool to go around I really don't have the right tools here so I'm just taking my time and I want to get this corner correct see so you have to go down a little farther not bad though okay I think we're doing pretty good our lines are established and we're roughing it out we're still getting closer this is nothing but a wood chisel but if you you cut it in this way it drives itself into the stone See that? If you put it this way, it drives it away, away from the stone. This cuts into the stone. So I use that a little bit. Now I got that, I got it roughed out where I'm not going to chip it. So I'm just going to kind of wear it away a little at a time. If you want to come down too hard, you could use a point chisel and go away from it. getting there so I've been going around the sides here getting it pretty close I got it roughed out 
In other words, I'm close. And then I got a little piece of wood and I just drug it around and I made my mark for my second piece. So I've been using this little $35 thing from uh, Arbor Freight and I keep it down low because if you keep it low, the air pressure like 2530, you, you can go slow with it. Now, I do have uh, diamond bits, of course, and you could use them, but they make a lot of dust. They make a lot of dust, and we don't want to get into the dust. But you could do, do that if you want it, just get a diamond bit. But we're just going to keep going like this, and and I'm just using a wood chisel again, but I uh, I don't want to damage it, so I just take it back to the line with the wood chisel. Because this stuff you could you could cut this with a butter knife if you want. See where we're at. that pretty roughed out but when I get over here I'm gonna do this by hand because I know one slip of that tool that's gonna wreck everything so I'm just gonna dig in there myself just like the old timers did so I turn it on its side and I'll do this little piece by hand it don't take that long that way I know I'm not gonna make any big mistakes Now we just get ourselves a little file and we go around and start filing it. Looks more like a wedding cake than it does like a pillar. But we're gonna get there. A little at a time, we're gonna get there. If you look at that picture, they have like a little swell in here so that like the water and everything don't uh, stay on it. I don't know if I want to really use the gun. I'm just going to use a regular file. This is like a, if you're doing, uh, working on a car and you're doing body work, that's the kind of file it is. See that? I'm rounding it off. I don't know how far I'll go with it. <sighs> Look, you can see the round is coming. I might cheat and leave it that. We'll see as we go. I brought out the bigger file. I don't even know where I got these. But I'm kind of liking it. It's not looking so much like a wedding cake now. Before it looked more like a wedding cake. People say to me, Mike, how come you never got married? My answer is, well, my wife won't let me. Or if it's a good looking girl, I'll just say nobody wants me. Maybe don't feel sorry for me, I don't know. So I'm kind of liking that. I'm just going like to finish it up like that instead of getting into a big concave there. Because I'll tell you what, uh, we're not going to win any trophies here. And even up here, see that? I see a bad spot here, a rough spot. I can get it out with the file. Coming out good. So we got that okay. So here's what I'm thinking of doing. Because they really don't have the proper tools. I'm going to do one of these deals. Like this. All the way around. Then I'm going to come down to here. For the bottom. 
just gonna do one of those deals and I'm just gonna cut into here and then maybe just drop it like that so I'm just gonna take my chisel and chisel around there so I don't chip up into there when I'm using the machine if I had the right uh, tools I could I could do it with the machine so I got it on the side and I just take a little off at a time. I don't want to chip too far in there. I'll, I'll hate myself. And then when I get enough off, I will, I will use the power tool. All right, this way, it's not chipping into that line. I achieved my goal that's where I wanted to get before I went any farther was to get it all roughed out and once I get it all roughed out it's looking okay I have another file here it's a lot finer and it gets in there a little bit better really so that's it for the most part I can get some sandpaper and sand it off real good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up to uh, Wayne Faree and get it critiqued and see what he could do with it. So I brought my project up to Wayne Faree, professional stone carver, and I showed it. How did I do so far, Wayne? You did pretty good, Mike, really, for the kind of tools you were using and for the, the level of skill that you've developed so far, which is pretty impressive, actually. Uh, there's no set way to do these sort of things. And I find that uh, hand-cut stone can be very charming because it's not perfect. I think there's something about stone that's not perfect that's really quite interesting and charming. I think you did a good job. Well, now, because I don't have the tools or really the knowledge and I want to see a professional guy do it, uh, they put the flutes, flutes down in there, you call them, right? Flutes, yeah. So you're going to show me how to do that before I even attempt it. I want to see how you would do that. Well, like I said, there's, there's all kinds of different styles of doing it. We'll just, like, run a line around here. And this is just a dollar store tape measure and a pencil. And sometimes you just don't need a lot of fancy tools to do something. And like Mike just will show in his video, uh, that he did not have a bunch of fancy tools. He had some primitive tools, and, and he had fun, you know? We'll just come up like this on either side of it, and then we'll have our inch. But that's basically it. And then what we'll do is we'll just we'll make a round circle here so we know where we're going to stop. Is yeah. we're just going to pencil in the area that we're going to cut. Good to have a sharp tool. Yeah, so uh, we're just kind of like, we're just kind of having fun here. And uh, 
as Mike would say, it's no big deal. Uh, but if you really like to try your hand at doing stuff like this, as you watch my video, you don't need a lot of fancy tools. You can go to garage sales and flea markets and get tools. You can get old wooden rasps are the best thing to use for limestone. Just a big, heavy, sharp wooden rasp. And uh, you can do a lot of work with that. And you can find those at garage sales, flea markets. And because, uh, you know, it's, it's a dying art, but that doesn't mean you can't pick up a tool and, and bring it to life. That ends another segment of rock facing and shaping stones. And we still have a long way to go. We're going to go into some granite and some other things. But I was never a carver. I've always been a stonemason. But everybody has to know, a real stonemason has to know something about this kind of work. So I take things so far, and then I took it down to my buddy Wayne Faree, who was a carver on the National Washington Cathedral. Now there's not a lot of those guys around, so I appreciate him adding to uh, my videos. And if you want to see the long extended version, 15 minutes, where he really talks about this kind of stuff, go to his channel, Wayne Faree, and uh, subscribe to him, because those guys, they're not gonna be around forever. And we want to get as much techniques as we can. So thanks for watching. I hope these videos help. I'll see you on the next video.